Uh, Cam will serve for five years, was in charge of 80 staff, and had access to our deepest national secrets. How come the SIS have plenty of time to spy on the sex lives of Green Party members, but no time to fact check the CVs of people we had the highest security clearance to? How is that possible? Well, one can only ask, and I guess the only person you can ask is the Prime Minister. Uh, in this case, you'd have to ask Helen Clark yep. because she was the one in charge at the time. Well, let's move on to that. Tim, your friend and mine, Richard Woods, was the man in charge of the SIS at the time Wilson was appointed. Woods was also responsible for the wrongful imprisonment of Ahmed Zawi for 10 months in solitary confinement and has just been appointed to the Independent Police Conduct Authority where apparently the entry criteria is incompetence and turning a blind eye to injustice. Why <laughs> is it Woods was getting he in a grilled? Bobsled? Was he in a bobsled team? Maybe, well, perhaps he was. Why is it Woods up on, uh, up on a grill? right now. Well, it's secret. It's all very secret. <laughs> we can't the head of his organisation is called Secret Intelligence <laughs> Service, like not that. the Open or Transparent <laughs> Intelligence <laughs> Service. It's, it's the same thing could be said of the uh, security warrants. It's like name suppression, Judge. isn't it? Yes. It's all John secret. Jeffries, the incompetent old duff is appointed because they will rubber stamp for whatever goes through. They don't it, investigate. It's the establishment. Totally. And if you poke pins in the eyes of the establishment, they wallop you. But isn't there, a, isn't there a serious question to be asked here about why he's now allowed onto the Police Conduct Authority? Because he will rubber stamp everything through and will conceal what needs to be Nothing concealed to in a, in a ham-fisted attempt to protect the establishment. H Helen yeah. Clark was a classic. She'd say, nothing to see here, folks. Move along. Does she need, she yeah. needs to answer some questions, yeah, she does. doesn't she? Because she pretty much went along. So she, does counter Phil Goff. she countersigned Woodstock. Phil Goff was a defence minister in 2005. Really? It was a swap over during the election. So when but how much is yeah, he going to... both parties, it's both sides. The only one who I'd really trust in this situation, unbelievably, is actually Keith Locke. Right. Yes, yeah. that's right. Okay. Well, at least we know he's mad. Exactly. Uh, who, who wins and who loses in this cock-up? Well, the SIS loses in terms of credibility. Yeah. Um, these guys how are supposed they to be guarding our with? secrets, although one does wonder what what secrets we actually do have. Yeah. Mm. Um, thankfully, the GCSB is not implicated in this at all because they probably have more secrets than the SIS. Right, right, right. right. Um, but certainly there, in, in there, um, you have to query the fact-checking of any CVs. I mean, these are basic business processes that anyone hiring anybody these days does. You can except even, for momentum. Except for, well, except for momentum. Who knows? I mean... Uh, I know that there's, there's organisations out there that for a small fee of about $150, they actually go and ring your um, references and check the, check the details in the background. So, I mean, that's oh, so there's actually, there are actually services out there actually, that do that? There's actually services and run by reputable, actually reputable private, yeah. private investigator companies that say, well, let us verify the background of your staff and it costs $150 or some small fee like that. Right. And when you're talking about, well, he's been employed since 2005, presumably on more than 100 a year. Uh -huh. um, you know, what's 150 bucks to background check? See, it's a, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The evidence and information is a phone call away. Yeah. A yeah. phone call oh, away. A Google yeah. away. Yeah. And, the other, <laughs> it's a and the other interesting thing is this guy has gone for five years in the Defence Department, and he's the head of Defence uh, defense Technology, Chief Scientist, for God's sake. And they say, a well, he's, he's done a competent job. Every single other person who's employed him, apparently, has said he's both a fantasist and incompetent. Right. And it's interesting that with Mary Ann Thompson and with this Wills guy, the Does only Mary place they're considered to be competent is in government. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? No, no, they are competent fantasists, though. We have to, I think we also have to just a, a salute to TV3. What a great story. Great what a great story. story. Well, really well done. Look at the know. difference between TV3 and TVNZ. The TV oh. and TV3 gets their, does, does some investigation, gets some facts out there. Boom, we've got a guy gone. Yep. Uh, TVNZ has an exclusive about, about an MP who can't be named, and it looks like they might be being charged. We'll get into that. Uh, thank you, panel. Coming up, Mr. Three Strikes, Tough on Crime, David Garrett, really a crumb, and will Holly Hodawera ever be happy? Citizen A is back after the break. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Citizen A. We're reviewing the week with bloggers Tim Sowen and Cameron Slater. Issue three this week, Mr. Tough on Crime, Three Strikes, and you're out, David Garrett, actually a convicted crim, and nothing seems to please Hono Hadawera. What does ACT and Māori Party's resident loose cannon suggest for their party's future aspirations? Tim, so David Garrett isn't a hypocrite for hiding his assault conviction while ramming through hardline law and order policy. 
So what does no. zero tolerance against violent crime actually mean now in the ACT Party? And is Garth McVickers crying into his victim rights pillow tonight? Well, it's not so much zero, it's a zero point something tolerance. Right. It's right. a zero point something tolerance. Little now, of course, Mr. Garrett would say, well, you know, you know, things happen in Tonga. Yes. Things that happen in Tonga stay in Tonga. Right. Right. Ten dollars. <laughs> What's on tour? The other guy got a hundred dollars, therefore it's like, well, only ten percent here. The other guy was ten times right. more culpable. Right. And so forth. And you go, well, was it worth raising? And the and the interesting Isn't point. It interesting, though, interesting that, point with Garrett is, Cam, that as far as the media goes, the guy should have front footed it. You always front yeah. foot, and he should have brought it up as a joking sort of thing. Oh my god, I was in Tonga. This guy did a big king hit behind me, and then I'm now up 100%. in court. Now, I don't want these minor convictions being brought up against in these three strikes. Yeah. 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 And it could yeah. have been laughed off. Yeah. 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 But he didn't. But he didn't. But he couldn't. Why? Oh, well, the Tongan, because, the Tongan situation. <laughs> because the Tongan because situation. you have some background information Be, about which we can't broadcast. Well, well, it seems that which the, we can't the, broadcast. The, the MP that we're talking about yes. can't say that about the details. No, exactly. But what but details? it's interesting though. I'm quite interested what though details? in Tongan law in that if you have a fight, the, both parties get. Um, charged with assault. That's and good. And that's good. That's, that's actually nice. quite interesting, yeah. isn't it? That Don't fight. There's not one person at fault. There's two people at fault, yes. and then they have a balance Instead of Instead of just Trevor Miller being at fault. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. For example. Exactly. Yeah. For example. For example. example. Yeah. 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 Uh, exactly. Cam, Rodney was told of Garrett's conviction in 2008 before he got the number five position. Isn't this just another appalling failure of leadership by Hyde? Shouldn't voters in Epsom be embarrassed with themselves? No, I think um, Rodney Hyde's actually following the law. He's had a one-on-one -on -one conversation, which Judge Harvey yesterday said is is uh, not covered mm. um, by, by uh, um, name suppression laws, mm. and he's kept that to himself, and um, he's followed the law, so I don't see what else Rodney Hyde should have done. Shouldn't Rodney, but shouldn't Rodney have thought twice about giving him the, 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 the crime, the law and order, when he knew this was in his background? Well, being a, a pinko yourself, you're, yes. you're fully into redemption oh, and rehabilitation. I am, I am. I am. So maybe it's, it's he, my bread and butter. It's may, my bread and butter. Maybe he saw but that I've never David Garrett but but had seen reformed that himself. I've never seen that, that rehabilitation. He's on the path of redemption. He's on the path of redemption. If you do this and put this through, through, put this through your Parliament, then that'll show that you're serious about reforming your violent ways. Well, well it was too minor... Th to, to, to really merit a, a, a mention. Tender. But as I say, when the legislation went through, which Garrett was, was fundamentally yes, behind, yes, was driving, right. driving. He, could, he could have front footed it and just mentioned it and no, laughed it off. He yes. wasn't allowed to. In Tonga. He, but, but, but the judge says that laws apply all over the place. Oh, are you going to get anal about this? I'm going to get very ah, anal see, about excellent. this. Uh, Tim, Hone refuses to vote for the foreshore and seabed legislation. You've made a submission on this bill to rectify this will. ugly ugly land confiscation by Labour. Yes. What's Hone's beef? Uh, well, basically, it, it assumes that the Crown, by reason of signing a Treaty of Waitangi, it owns everything. Right. They don't have to explain it. They own absolutely everything, everything and they can do whatever they want with it. Yeah. We should have had a war. Which makes which makes white people happy. We, we should oh, have some, had a war. Some white people, white people yeah. are overjoyed with that Instead situation. of a treaty, Others we should have had a war. Yes, 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 and yes, the thing yes. is that Hone Harawera does have a constituency. He does. He's, a, he's a rather militant chap. Yep. And uh, we were talking uh, yep. briefly before about, well, will he declare that yeah, he's yeah, an independent? Yeah. And yep. I would argue that he is basically an independent already. Right. He is. He right. is an independent already. And the Maori Party will not stand a candidate because they will lose. He's on Honest Tane, who's sticking it to the man, yep. and Northland uh, is all about sticking it to the man. Yep, that's I mean, what they do. And he's doing a good job. And he's doing a good job, man, and they go, yeah, go Hone. Yeah. You're the so man. He's, he's, go he's going to become an independent, isn't he? Well, he, he might. They, I don't think he has to. I, he I don't, don't think, think he has to. He has he's to. the independent wing of the Maori party. Yes. <laughs> Maori independent. Yep. Um, they won't put anyone against them. Because but the, they can't. the Māori Party are in meltdown, aren't they? Tarion uh, fired their, um, their their strategist, their chief strategist, and all of these That's policies, like intelligence, all of these, it? all of these policies, which are seen to only be helping the corporate iwi and not the poor. This is well, going to be the a, death This is the problem isn't? that the Māori Party has always had: is they're in in the the grasp, the clutch, the death embrace of corporate iwi. I agree with you, 100 percent right. on right. that. There are so many Maori that are that are not involved in the corporate corporate iwi, um, and they just miss out all the time. Yeah. Uh, and and you've got the likes of Naitahu, who who you've got to say one of the most successful corporate you know, iwi's yeah, yeah. of the life, yeah, yeah, yeah. a multi-millionaire yeah. yeah. uh, corporation. But who are they actually helping? Right, you know? right. 
They own multi-million dollar fishing companies and... That's and the mythology. That, You'd love just to that, talk that, about that, wouldn't you? That's actually... Oh, it's only the corporate... Every, if you look at Fano Ora and some of the other things that they're rolling some out, of those they are, are devolved beyond the corporate... Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Way and, beyond and, and that. They, and, and they, they help at the grassroots, but yep. you'll never hear about it in the, in the dear old hero. No, that's true. Because right. it's a positive story and nothing's happening. Well, right. I don't have a problem with the Maori Party... Per se, I think they they've got a constituency that's valid under MMP. Um, they get there not through their percentage of the vote. But, but is this foreshore and seabed bill going to be a win for them if Hane Harawira is standing on the yeah, outside yeah, of the tent, yeah, as it were, yeah, pissing yeah, in, yeah, 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 going, yeah, "This yeah, isn't yeah. credible." Well, I, um, and even the two leaders are going, "Well, maybe we could well, get more." Later and in 2000, yes. well, that's always the case for Maori, though, isn't it? We can always get more later because on. Because Pākehā give less. Because okay. Pākehā always give less. There's yeah. Not, yeah, exactly. I mean, $1.7 exactly. to South Canterbury Finance in five minutes. Took 25 years to get the fiscal envelope didn't through, adjust, didn't it? Didn't it just, didn't it just. <laughs> so, OK, um, bo both of you, will Labour take back the other Māori seats? Uh, obviously, Hone will take his, but will, Māori, so. will Labour take the other Māori seats? I think Nānia well, Mahuta is still... Ploughing Princess, ahead, and Princess a, Narnia will and still stay there. And unless they stand a very strong candidate against her, yep. then I think she might actually take it again. Unfortunately, yep. Parakura Horomia, well, I, I don't... Heaven only he's knows why the, people vote for that. He's guy. got all yep, the pies. Yep, yep. But uh, that area is very friendly, shall we say, towards the Crown and always has been. Right. And Parakura is particularly friendly. He is a very friendly man. He, he works with the government, he knows an inside job. You, you, look, you look at how the party vote split and it was overwhelmingly Labour and those Māori electorates. Always and, have, are, I still are can't they, they understand. Take it? They, they probably will, but I can never understand why the poor of South Auckland and the, and the rural Maori vote Labour. They've got nothing Because out National of them Party ever. are racist. <laughs> <laughs> you don't seem to get that yet. Tim, uh, Labour who are racist? It's, it's quite racist. simple. Yeah, but they're Labour, they're it's they're quite simple. Racist. They're, less racist. they're less racist. They're less racist. Labour, they're less racist. Labour, Labour are worse. They're they racist and condescending. Um, Tim, who wins and who loses an act in the Maori Party by this week's actions from their truth loose cannons? Oh, I think Hane Harawera will be back again. Yes. Uh, he will definitely. W uh, as far as the legislation goes, I want to see what happens in the select committee process. There's still some wiggle room, yep. I think, um, but it's nothing to make Hone Harawira agree with them. And of course, the Prime Minister is loving this. Yep. This will uh, make it seem moderate Helps as national. opposed to the yep. extremists. Uh, but as for act, Back oh X. my God, David Garrett's got a real problem. He. he um, yeah, I don't know if we can even talk about it because there seems to be suppression, suppression orders. orders yes, yeah, we know and, uh, suppression over uh, here. You know, but who has but it? And, uh, there are, oh, yes. there are problems, yep. and um, his credibility is on the line. Should he have disclosed it beforehand? Well, Sweet. legally, maybe, maybe he yeah. should, shouldn't have. But he's he's is in this, dire straits, and I. The final but he's such a conflict. conservative. I want the guy to go anyway, and I think it right. would help the ACT Party if they got back to being the Liberal Party that right. used to be their moniker. Uh, Cam, who, who, who wins and who loses an ACT and the Māori Party by this week's actions from their two loose cannons? Well, the Māori Party, um, I don't think Hone is going to cause them any damage. He's actually a useful, um, you know, pop valve, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, the Māori Party is, oh, don't worry, that's all. That's just Hone again. And meanwhile, we're working constructively with the government. Yep. So the Māori Party can actually appear mm -hmm. to be doing yeah. good things. And they have got some really great things that they have done. Mm. Um, so I don't think there's any winners and losers. Hone Harawira will always win. It's yep. always about honest Hone. Yep. Um, in terms of the ACT Party, well, they'll just carry on. I mean, I'm surprised you guys even bother. They're less than 2% in the polls. And yet they have so much say over bloody legislation. It's disgusting, isn't it? Well, what no. if John Biscow and uh, something happens to him? There's only one, because R R Roger Douglas is ruled out. Right, as being right. a minister, the only guy is left is David, David Garrett. Is Roger still alive? I think he died some time ago. Uh, at the same let's, time Jim Anderson did. Let's wrap the show with last word. Tim Selwyn, your last word this week is? Well, the foreshore and seabed will be something very interesting. I believe it's going through this week. Mm. and But they want to truncate it and they want to ram it all home mm. before the end of the year. I don't think they should rush it, as I said before in the original. This is even before the legislation went through in 2004. should split the bill. You have a public access bill, and this will reach consensus, mm. I, I, I understand, and everyone can vote for it. Then we have a more complicated bill dealing with Maori interests in the foreshore and seabed. Uh, we can reach a consensus, but we need court. time and we need to take the heat out of it. And by splitting it, we can. Let Cam, your last word. My last word is to Simon Power, and he needs to stop listening to his, to his uh, advisers, his uh, captured establishment people. The answer to solving the issue of name suppression is not... Um, further increases in fines. It's not um, increased restrictions. It's about more openness in our justice system, and that's what I'd say. 